G'day and welcome to my garage. I've been away recently, uh, so it slowed, has, has slowed things up a little bit on the building of the gingering milling machine. But um, my excuse, I visited my five grandchildren in Queensland. And for, for us, that's a, uh, it's about a 12 kilometre, 12 kilometre, 1200 kilometre uh, drive uh, one way. So, it's a big round, uh, round trip and we make the most of it being a uh, retired couple. So uh, whilst I was there, the son-in-law has a uh, uh, fully manual milling machine, standard um, uh, vertical type, and um, I thought, well, why not use his machine? So I made preparations before I left and uh, casted the um, uh, the uni universal compound components. Uh, part of those, the, the makeup of the universal compound is the universal base, the swivel compound, compound slide, and the um, The, the, the uh, what, do, what do they call it? What do they call it? Do they have a and the screw support. So um, yes, uh, be the, these will be up and coming uh, videos. Uh, I think at the present moment, I'll be sh I'm showing you... Um, so, yes, that's, uh, that's where we're at. I, uh, I'll be back on things again, and um, maybe, hopefully I can keep it to a weekly basis. May have to take a little bit longer. Uh, I need to do uh, some jobs around the house, which uh, um, yeah, someone's prompting me to do. So rather than spend all this time playing with the gingering milling machine, I've, I've got to do other work also. So anyhow, back to building the gingering milling machine. See you later. I've just um, uh, traced this pattern out twice. This is the uh, the motor mount pattern, so that'll get rolled over and then riveted to the uh, motor box, and then um, a bolt here and a slot up here for adjustment. Now, this will give me now two adjustments for the. Uh, for the motor, the motor naturally comes with about an inch travel on the uh, um, motor mount box itself, and then this. I don't need this to uh, travel, but uh, hey, I've got to make it. I might, I might as well uh, put it in there, even if I don't use it. It's only, it's only two slots that I've got to make. So let's cut this out. Watch your ears.
I had one minor mishap, mishap when I was cutting the other, the other one. Came down too far, didn't realise it. Doesn't matter. But, um, I can just put a light weld on that, clean it, clean it up. Well, that's the two motor mount brackets. Just got to clean the edges up and um, and then bend over, bend over those pieces. I'm just bending over the uh, the lower 20 millimetres along that line there. Just uh, going to bend it in. That's pretty good. <laughs> just good, Jack. the other one to do. Okay, that fits. Beautiful. There's always a little bit of hand firing. First two all the way through, but the uh, the others I don't want to do it because there's a motor underneath it. Don't want to break the drill bit. Okay, there we have the two motor mount brackets. Now I'm going to rivet, rivet these to the, uh, the, the motor mount bracket itself. I've cut two of these brackets, bent them, slotted them, drilled them, drilled them, so they're ready to be uh, riveted on to the motor bracket. So I've got you sitting up high, it's taken a while to work out where I can get this camera. I've got you sitting up fairly high above me on a pole. So here we go. Okay, that's tight. So 
Looks like the third hole will have to be uh, relieved a little bit. Let's see if I can get a screwdriver or something in there to pull it over a bit. I'm not wearing it, but uh, I should be, uh, ear protection, it's uh, pretty loud. I know I didn't in the other ones, but what's happening here is it's uh, the noise of the hammer is echoing inside this box and bouncing straight, straight out to me. But let's get this one done, and then I'll see if I can find my earplugs. Fitted the right way around. Beautiful. <coughs> I'm just welding the bottom brace <coughs> back into the uh, uh, motor motor bracket. I, uh, these were only tacked in very lightly. It's a good thing I did break it out. I took it out so I could get to the uh, hammer those rivets. Now the brace has got to go back in again, and uh, like I said, good thing I did notice it, because there was uh, not much holding it in position. Um, I haven't done a dry run on this, so uh, let's hope it fits. I 
won't tighten these ones up too tight, they'll only be nipped because they are the hinges for this swiveling bracket. So the load has got to come up a little higher already. And then I've still got more adjustment here. So let's have a look. Oops. Sorry about that. Rags. Here we go. Okay, won't be long now. Uh, I've got one on this side to do, but I uh, need to come in from underneath. I might be able to get the back one here. And there we have it. One more bolt to put in, but and I've got to go back and get the right size belt. Oh, not you can't see that. Where are we? That one. Got to get the right size belt for this. The main spindle's now. The main spindle has now been turned around and um, it's been, been driven uh, on the uh, the front side. Uh, luck, luckily, I, I left this shaft extra long until I sorted out what I was going to do with it. I didn't realise I would need it for this, but hey, good one. Well, this is like watching grass grow, isn't it? See you in a week.